Welcome back to Autism Live. I'm so excited right now. I'm always excited when I get to talk to really smart people, and we've got three really smart people who are joining us right now via Skype from Arizona State University. We have Professor uh, Jim Adams, and then we have Dr. Kang, who's with us. I'm trying really hard not to slaughter anybody's names, and Professor Krafmalnik Brown. How did I do? Great. Did I do great. okay? Okay. And these are three of the lead scientists that worked on the study that we were just talking about last week out of Arizona State University that everybody's been talking about, about fecal transplants. Now, I have to, I want to be respectful of you guys. My, my former career was as a stand-up comedian and frequently on the show when we have to talk about, we talk about poo very often on the show and sometimes people call us the poo show because we talk about poo so much, but I'm going to try to keep it all professional and, and because I'm so thrilled that you guys are here. For people who haven't seen us talk about this on the show, can one of you tell us why, what the study was and why it's getting so much attention? Yeah, because this is a, uh, very exciting because this is the first published study of fecal microbiota transplant for the children with autism. Yeah, and, and this is, you know, I, I know a lot of people maybe hadn't heard about fecal transplant before, but correct me if I'm wrong, this is not something, fecal transplant has been around for a while, but, but this is the first time, as you said, that, we, that it's a study using fecal transplant for children with autism. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So when we say fecal transplant, boy, things things come to mind. How is this actually done? Because it sounds a little on the icky side, but it's really it's science and it's not that that icky. So how how do you actually do a fecal transplant? So even though it says a fecal, but it is not real fecal, but this is very highly purified and microbes, ninety nine percent is microbes out of feces and then the, this like the we call it microbiota transfer therapy mpt so it involves in the antibiotic treatment and the prelocic and movie prep and together with the fecal transplant so it all together makes the, all things the change the gut microbiota and then that leads to the gi symptoms and behavior symptoms improvement okay so is but to put a fine point on it is this something you take in a pill through the mouth or is it something that comes up from the bottom maybe two. <laughs> so what we're using is human donors who are very healthy very carefully screened provide the raw material that on uh, the stool that's then processed and purified to remove all the waste product so it's 99 percent bacteria essentially just like a probiotic Right. In our study, we used a liquid form um, so that it's just the bacteria in a liquid to carry it, and the kids just drank it down in most cases. Um, but for a few of the kids at the start, they did a rectal infusion first, and then the daily dosing was done orally. Um, and all the kids tolerated it just fine. It had very little odor or smell to it, and um, generally was very well tolerated. The difference between what we do and all the other fecal transplant studies do is most fecal transplant studies are only one dose, one time. Our, we found that kids with autism were very hard to treat, so we treated them for eight weeks um, daily dosing. So that's a major reason we think why our study was so successful. Okay. I want to say something. Yes. I want to add that um, this is not like you would say a normal fecal transplant that I know sometimes people do at home. This was very purified material. This was under medical supervision, and we did extra steps. It wasn't just a fecal transplant. First, we cleared the gut with antibiotics. Then we did um, Moby Prep, which also e ended up emptying the gut and the residual antibiotics. And then we did the treatment. And I want to add also the fact that the reason we did this treatment is that one of the things that we wanted to achieve was to increase the diversity of these microorganisms in the gut. And um, luckily we did that very successfully. Okay, and so this was, correct me if I'm wrong, but this was phase one, 
And then now in order, because everybody has been writing in and saying to us, how can I get this? How can I do this? I, I want to be excited about, you know, and I, I want to try this with my child. This was phase one of your trial. You still need to do phase two and phase three before we're going to be able to go to our doctor and say, do this. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Right. So phase one, the, the FDA classifies fecal transplant as a medical treatment. And so it needs to do a phase one study, which is safety. And that's what we showed. We found it was generally very safe. Then we have to do a phase two and phase three study that are placebo controlled to show that the treatment is actually better than placebo. Okay. And, and maybe we should backtrack for just a second. And it was really successful. What are the things that you found um, in, in, in these children with autism? Yeah, I think the one of the big reason is that the gum microbiota is a switched uh, to the totally switched to the better, the more diversity. So there can be not only the one or two microbes maybe working together, but like the diversity microbes really help to like to change the symptoms of GI problems and then behavior improvement. Okay, so we, we, we're supposed to have all these microbes in our body that are supposed to be working overtime for us, helping us, but we're finding that a lot of us don't, and not just kids with autism, but kids with autism in particular don't have them. We've been trying to treat them with probiotics, not getting it all the way done. And what you found was then looking afterwards after doing the transplant, that it was recolonizing. Is that correct? Right, right. It wasn't just recolonizing, but we managed to change the environment in the gut in such a way that um, not only we added the microbes from the donor, but we saw that uh, the children in our study were able to recruit new beneficial microbes, which was very exciting. I, that's and I will add to this if you want. Yeah, so the, for example, the Prevotella, which is the found is uh, to so reduce a lower concentration in the children with autism in the previous study. But in this study, we found that even though that is not present in the donor sample, but after treatment, that prevotella abundance is really increased after that, which means, like, as Dr. Kakumari Brown says, the kind of the microbiota transfer treatment kind of changes the environment. They kind of accept the, that beneficial bacteria, even though that is not in the donor samples that much. That's pretty exciting. And so the, but what ended up happening as a result of that was behavior changed and symptoms changed. And so what kinds of changes in behavior did you see in the kids? So the first thing we were interested in were GI symptoms. These children had had GI problems from infancy, chronic diarrhea, chronic um, constipation for years that was basically uh, very unresponsive to any standard treatment. And the children had tried, and the parents had tried many different types of treatments. And so what we were so pleased to see is that there was an 80% reduction in symptoms in these children. So a great improvement in 16 out of the 18 children. But two of them, there wasn't much change in their GI symptoms. So we think we need to um, change the treatment protocol uh, maybe a longer treatment, maybe a higher dose may help in future. But okay. still, 16 out of 18 had a great improvement in GI symptoms. What was a very pleasant surprise is there was also about a 25% reduction in autism symptoms, that their language improved, their cognition improved, their um, interaction with others, their social interaction improved. Uh, many of the children at the start of the study had some hyperactivity, some irritability, lethargy, um, and all of those reduced about 25% as part of the study. So I think that just uh, reducing the chronic pain and discomfort these children have um, will help indirectly um, with their improvements uh, in their symptoms. Well, one of the things I've really appreciated in all the articles that we've been reading about this uh, is that a quote from you, Professor Adams, saying, you know, when somebody, and I'm going to paraphrase, but when somebody's trying to learn something, if they are having pain in their stomach and having diarrhea symptoms, it's much harder to learn when you have to deal with that kind of thing. And when we remove that, we're setting up a student for more success to be able to learn new things. Absolutely. Absolutely. I really appreciate that. Go ahead. No problem.
Well, so now you're going to move into phase two, and and what do what can we all be doing to help you? What do you need to make this to get to the point where this can be mainstream? Well, we're working as hard as we can and as quickly as we can, and we hope to do another study uh, down the road uh, that will be a much larger placebo-controlled study. Um, certainly, we do need uh, financial help that these. Um, we have, we're lucky to get a grant from our university to do the first study, um, and we um, are planning to do another study. And if families want to be added to our contact list, uh, they can send me an email, and we'll add them to our contact list. But we can't open the recruiting for about six to nine months. Okay. And do they need to live in the Arizona area, or can it be? Can they be farther away? Um, there will be two uh, two sites to the study. And uh, they will need to come to Arizona or to our other site um, to, um, for several times. They don't have to live in the area, but they'll have to be able to come here uh, several times to meet with our physicians uh, for the study. Well, this is really exciting, you guys. And I, I want to thank you for your amazing work. We want to thank um, everybody who, all the families who participated. We want to thank uh, Arizona State University. Um, and encourage people, if you know people who have money to give that are interested in doing uh, grants, um, to help you to be able to get phase two on the road. Because it's been overwhelming here, people asking, how do we get this? How do we get involved? Um, what is your email, uh, Dr. Adams, so if people want to get a hold of you? They can honest. email me at jim, J-I-M, dot Adams, A-D-A-M-S, at asu.edu. And do you, Again, want, do you want, go ahead. Can, uh, build our contact list. And they can also go to our website for more information on the study. We have a short video clip there that explains a little bit more what was involved in the study. And, and should they put something in the subject matter so that you know that they're, they're wanting to be on the list? Uh, something, if they just put in FMTs, that would be fine. Okay, great. Uh, we're unfortunately we're out of time because I got a million more questions I'd love to ask. But but thank you guys so much, and we'd love to to follow and and see when you guys are getting ready for phase two.